This video is going to show you how to take a test gen exam, convert it into a format for D2L, and then export it into D2L and how to set up the exam once it's there. All right, so what I'm going to do, I have an exam open that's not relevant to the particular courses I'm bringing up here. So I have a test gen exam already open. I'm already in D2L. So I'm just going to, at the time I'm making this, I'm just going to pick an old expired class here just to not confuse students that might see it. I'm going to delete it anyway, but students that might see this video, by myself, if they happen to be in D2L right now and see it, I mean, see this test pop up or something. Alrighty, so what we have to do is, let me come down here and this test, I'm going to take this, I'm probably just going to put it on my desktop just so it doesn't end up somewhere I don't want it. So you, whatever you test, you come over here and you go file, export. And then you drop down arrow. So I've done this in both Blackboard and D2L. I've never used anything other than that. I've printed them into PDS, but I'm talking about to setting them up into some you know, learning system where you can give, you know, have students take exam within the learning system. So your desire to learn. Okay. And I'm going to put this on the desktop. And it's creating this zip file where it can interpret it. So you see it's exporting the exam. Well, apparently it's done. But so I'll go back in the D2L and come over here. So I'm taking this class. Now this is going to assume that you, I'll talk about this in a minute, that you've already got a, a, a grade item set up. You know, whether you're using D2L to compute your grades, that doesn't really matter. But it, to display the grades to the students, it needs to have some sort of grade item associated with it. I'll click on this just for a second. Grades. And, yeah, you don't have to calculate an average with it or anything, but. Oh, this is unusually slow. <clears throat> so at the at, at the grades level here, you can see setup wizard will help you set up what you need here, but I'll show you what manage grades looks like because I've already set up items in here. But you can create a grade book just to have one assignment in there, and you know, and you can just explain to students that that's not, you know, your that's not how their grade is calculated. But you see over here on the left, all these grade items. So once you've kind of created a bunch of stuff, that's how you'll know where to send your grade into. So I have eight quizzes, a final. So these are called the categories, and then these are items. So you have items within a category. That's not too bad setting these up. Well, that takes care of that. So let's go back. So we've we've exported the file in, uh, to zip. Now let's get it into D2L. So I need to come over here to Course Management, go to Course Admin. And I come over here, import, export, copy ex components. Which you can use this for copying um, from another, the top one if you were like copying another class or whatever. But you come down here for like individual items like we're doing, import components, start.
upload. Now, if I can find this, well, on my desktop, I may have to, let's see, there it is at the very bottom. Let's see if I can get that up at the same time. Maybe I can copy and paste it. Usually I just drag them right in there, but they're usually in, in another folder that I can open. I'll try this way. If not, I'll see if it'll let me. No, I'm going to have to just select it probably like this. All right, I've never done it this way. But generally it's a drop and drag. I just can't figure out how to get the... Well, maybe I should just, well, you know, I guess I could have just minimized this size screen, couldn't I? No, I need to reduce it, not. Yeah, that's what all I need to do. Okay, I made that way too difficult. Now you see I've got the corner. I can drag it right in here. And you put it right inside that box. Boom. Import all components. And however long it takes. Shouldn't take too long, but. I can't imagine that it'll take a few minutes. Okay, it's done. We don't want to import any other packages, so I'm going to go over here to view content. D2L is really slow right now. I'm going to go over to, over to Course Activities. That's where we find quizzes. Quizzes means anything that's exams or something that's being graded. So I'm going to click on Quizzes, and that's where everything like this happens. And then you see it will already put it, it knows it's a quiz type item, so it would put it in there for you. And then now you go in here and set up, you can change the name of it or whatever. Um, edit. Freddy's exam. So the main thing here are properties, restrictions, assessment, and submission view here. So, so Freddie's exam, restrictions. Now it came default that is hide from users, so obviously you want to release that. I don't worry about that due date. That doesn't really worry about its use. Um, start date, end date, wherever I want it to end. And the way D2L works is whatever you give a time limit, as long as they enter the exam before the, the ending time you put in there, then they'll get their allotted amount of time. So let's say your test was two hours and you wanted them to be finished by 6 p.m., you could put a 4 p.m. time in there. Display and calendar, that'll show on the D2L calendar when it's coming up and that sort of thing. So. I think it's always good to check that, but you can take care of that with an announcement. Password, if you want to have a password. Um, when I do proctored exams, I always have a password, but the students don't know it. Um, I give it to the testing centers and proctoring organizations, and they'll type it in there so the student can get in. Uh, sometimes if it's not a proctored exam, I'll even give the password just so the student doesn't accidentally open it by mistake. You, you, and then, oh, I need to have it reset, blah, 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 blah. You would kind of, it would be a little difficult to open it by mistake because you you typed in a password. That's not, you know, that's harder to do by accident versus just clicking on it. Timing, okay, I always pick it in force, time limit, so whatever you want here. I don't know. I always go with five minute grace period. That's fine. And then when the time limit runs out, they're, they're not allowed to make any more change, let, change anything. Now this is only if you need to 
add a student that gets more time um, or you're adding a student that you're going to allow to take it late you could go back you could go back and just change the the dates up here if you wanted to but if you didn't want it showing you know, after the deadline let's say you didn't want this displayed anymore you could just leave that as is and under the down here you can set up for an individual individual student and give them a different deadline so I'm going to save right there not save and close yet and we have two more things to look at assessment yeah this is where I messed up a few minutes ago this is where it makes it display but there probably won't be any options because everything's already in use here. Always check this box. And then here. Yeah, there's nowhere for it to go. But then, so if you've created somewhere for it to go, like a Freddy's exam or whatever, you'll click on that right here. I guess they're allowing you the option to add a grade item right here. I guess I can do that. This is an old course, so... I don't care what happens to it. Friday's exam. I've never actually done this before because I already have my. And then just click on this box where that way that's what's going to allow it to go to that grade item that it just created. So I guess you can do that. That I guess you could. You probably could just do this then instead of going through the whole setup grade process. I've just never done it this way, but you could try it, and then you can look in the grade book and see if it shows anything for Freddie's exam. That could be a way to do it. How many attempts? More than one attempt. You would choose, you know, which one highest, whatever. Um, so I'm going to save that. The last thing is submission views. And then yeah, I leave that just like that for the default view. Now what I usually do, this is allowing, you know, when they can when they can view it. I, I don't I wait till kind of after the exam's over. I could set the date right now. But yeah, if, if I give someone an extension or this, that, and the other, I want to make sure the test is complete before I allow someone to look at it and perhaps share answers with someone else. So this is where you'd click in an, uh, an additional view. So you can wait till you know that everybody's done before you set this up. Because you'll have students probably asking you, can we see our exam? You can just tell them, yeah, you name it, so it's Freddie's exam or whatever, and then you can show up. But I just assume wait because that way you, you can't have the issue of someone be able to see their, you know, they'll know their grade, but it, uh, otherwise, so you, here's where you pick the date. Or sometimes I'll create this and then I'll put it way far in advance and then I'll come back and edit it later. So that way it's already done, then I just change the time. So you've got you to come down here, check a few boxes. Yes, I just click all these, I can, and that way it'll show everything. Yeah, because that's not checked. It's not going to be very good when it doesn't it just, click on the submission, it's not going to show anything. It's up to you whether you want to show any statistics for the students. I say that. And then it's uh, basically done at this point. One thing, the last thing, we'll show you a couple of things. Let me... Okay, I'm going to save and close. See, so there's, there's Friday's exam right there. A little, okay, let's see, I forgot what that little key means. Uh, what grade item it's associated with, okay. And it's also the same as the grade item. Um, and... Let me come over here to grades and see what it actually did. So I'm not sure if I, how it would affect the percentages and that sort of thing. And where, because I didn't really put it in a category, so I don't know how it's going to show up here. 
I'm just kind of curious. I've never done this before with that part of it, but I'm just curious if it's going to show. And you see it did something that kind of threw off these percentages here, but that's that's quite all right. That, that's only an issue if, um, you know, you're actually using your D2L to compute your average. But this was just, like I said, it was just an illustration here. So, um, so I threw it in there, but it kind of threw off my percentages a little bit. But that's all right. So if I went over here, I'm not sure, because I didn't put it in. We had a great item, but it's not. So I guess it's probably just independent somewhere. It's probably not. Yeah, it's not part. Well, because it was at, it was all by itself. But there it is, Friday's exam. Right there, and that's exactly where it'll dump the grades. All right. Yeah, so there you go. So it'll be it'll be there. So yeah, I would just go through the process where I showed you that just where add grade item. Like I said, if you're only using it for display purposes, that's a whole lot easier than don't worry about setting up the grade book. So I learned something new here. So and like I said, just tell the students that's don't trust whatever grade it shows you average wise or whatever in there. You're just interested in displaying the grade. They'll take the test. They'll hit submit. And um, it will put the grade right in the grade book. Now, the viewing of it, one last thing I'll say is, you know, whenever you set that submission date, that's when it's going to be viewable. I'm going to come over here, show you real quick what the students would do. First of all, because this is very confusing, first time people are using this. It doesn't quite seem logical on how, how you view it. So they're going to come in here to their course activity quizzes. They're going to click on Friday's exam and then put in that password. If you, oh, if you give a password, if you gave it, if not, they'll be ready to go. They'll hit start. They'll hit submit when they're done and it'll show them the grade, but they can't see anything until after that submission view has been set up. But here's the confusing part. So let's say, you know, you release the submission. It's Everybody's taking the test, and you're ready to let them all look at, see which ones they missed. That's fine. Um, what you what you come back in here, and it's, it seems natural. You would just click on this again. You know, I would think I could see why somebody would think that's right, but it's not. You actually come. You won't see it right here when I do it right now because it's not going to show it. But if you click on the drop down arrow, and it's going to. There's not going to be all these choices here for the students. But it'll say like view submission or something like that. But that's, but not until the submission date's released. View it either view attempt or view submission. There's only going to be a couple things. They're not going to have yeah. They can't edit the test because they're not the instructor. In fact, what I could do real quick here is we still won't see view submission. But actually, you know what though? I can go to a different test and show you that. Well. Maybe not, though. Maybe, maybe I would have had to have actually entered. I might be wrong because I might have had to take the quiz to be able to see it. Okay, yeah, that might not work. But it doesn't hurt to see what it looks like. So I'll click on this one. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. So there it says submissions, but it, yeah, it's all, I haven't done any of them. There's one, evidently, did I take this one? Let's see, submissions. Okay, I must have been just demonstrating how to do this for students or whatever. So, I mean, I'm, I know I would have gotten more than five out of ten right if it was a serious attempt. But anyway, I probably was doing a video, intro video, and just, okay, here's what you do, blah, 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 boom. And that's usually when I make a joke about, oh, if I do bad, I can just change my grade. I'm sure that's what I did. I just showed how to take. There you go. So now it's showing. So it's showing um, what I answered, and then the arrow shows what the correct answer would be. So the students will be able to see that at some point. Um, 
Let me go back for a second. But yeah, when you go to, everything's all nice and bubbled in there. They don't type in the answers. You just click the bubble and I guess I could demo that, demo that with Freddie's exam, couldn't I? Oh no, I got to go back. Wait. I'm not, there's, this is like a 50 question. Yeah, so you see they come through, they start quiz. Some reason it's not. Uh, it's probably slow. Lo okay, yeah, it was just slow loading up here, but there you go. Some of these are true, false. Now in test gen, the true, false mode is not multiple choice. So the way I created these questions was I, I made a multiple choice and then I just deleted two of the answer choices and just typed in true or false. But the true, false option in in test gen. Is not a is not a multiple choice option. You would have to, in other words, put in T or F. But this way it makes it work multiple choice. But anyway, so there you go. So you go through there. There, there it is. You take the test. You bubble in the answers, and then when it's very end, you submit it, and there you go. There you go. Submit their quiz, and that's perfect. And I believe we are done with this video.